But no one really knows Mike Tyson. Nobody really friendly with Mike Tyson. Who oh, I? Except Customato. vastly different. You could never understand the, the action and the excitement of it all. I mean, even though they know that you're a crook, when you're on the bus or when you're walking in the check cashing place or the grocery store, they know to watch you and you still outsmart them. Like most people would think, um, well, she knows when she, she's on to me, I'm going to walk away. But just to still watch and watch when they think they know and then they make a mistake. They outsmart them and they have their wallet. It was the first time I was ever arrested, and I was 12 years old. The first day he even met me, the first day he met me, he took me in his house, he didn't even know me. As time was going on, this guy just keeps, he kept saying these, um, he just kept saying these great things about us. This guy, I didn't know this guy was queer. He just kept saying great things. He said, man, you're a great fight. He just kept saying you're the greatest. You do splendid. It gives me the motivation and interest to stay alive. Because I believe that a person dies when they no longer want to live. But I have a reason, Mike. I remember the day when Mike came, yes. I remember the first time laying eyes on him. He was being escorted across the field to our place by two bigger staff. They brought him in, in uh, handcuffs. Um, and he found out that I was an ex-fighter. And he asked one of the staff, well, how can I meet Stuart? So finally I went to, the, to his room one night and I banged on his door to intimidate him. I said, so you want to meet me? What, what the hell do you want? He said, I want to be a fighter. I said, so do the rest of these other guys, all the rest of these other guys. They haven't got the balls to, be, to, to work to be a fighter. I'm real, I'm serious, Mr. Stewart. I said, let's see your behavior continue like it is for a few weeks, and we'll see what happens. This is what impressed me. This this kid changed, I mean, just, he because he wanted it. The teachers called from school. I knew one of the English teachers called and said, what the hell happened to this guy? I became a nice guy, I talked to people nice, I became a gentleman, and eventually my grades got better, and then he started teaching me how to box. Mike and I were sparring one time. He hit me with a jab. It almost knocked me down, luckily, I had the next week off from trying because my nose was broke and my eyes were all black. And I told my wife the next day, I said, that's it. I want you to go to this man. This guy could take you to the next level. And at that time, I was probably 1980. I met Custom Auto. He watched me for like, he didn't let me box. He would just talk to me for like two or three weeks about fighting and the psychology of fighting. But they think about it all the time. Everything they do. That's that right. guy there, That's like me. No, no. You. Man, they had to come and sense that we're getting in trouble. Like the other day, right? I was saying, yeah. Who's that the complex? <laughs> you know the other day I was like this. I said, yeah. I talked to this girl. Mm -hmm. They were saying, how can I do that? I said, I'm like a fool. Oh. Uh, if you do because I said it, you're a fool. You got to do because what I said was right. That's what you got to do it for. Not because I said it. All I do is remind you. You gotta do it because you know it's right to do, and it's gonna benefit you in the long run. He just kept, kept giving me um, compliments and compliments about everything I did. So what's the role with this guy? and uncover. So my job is to take the spark and spin. When it starts to become a little flame, I see it. When I see the fire, it becomes a roaring blaze. And then when it turns a roaring blaze, I pour a huge lock on it. When you really got a fire on I never had the slightest idea of um, building up my confidence. And I started believing in this old man. 
I stopped being a little thief. I used to go back to New York and rob people and then come back upstate and hide out. I turned into a, a complete animal. I turned into a disciplinarian. This guy had me um, clean my room. He had me just, he just had me, he, this guy brainwashing me so much that if he told me to, he was, if he told me to bite, I bite. And then one day he used to just say, listen, you have the chance to change your life, your family's life. You could be something very special. Don't you want to be champion? You could be champion of the world. And I, I didn't pay no attention to it. He said, really? You could be champion of the world. You could devastate the world. No man could take what you think. You just gotta believe it. I looked at this guy and then I started thinking. I said, you really? I said, this guy's really crazy. He said, you do what I tell you to do. And if it doesn't work, then, then you could leave. So I said, okay, bet. So I did um, everything he told me to do and um, I won. He's my boy. He's with me. But I often say to him, you know, I owe you a lot. And he doesn't know what I mean, but I'm going to tell him now what I mean. If he weren't here, I probably wouldn't be alive today. The fact that he is here and doing what he's doing and doing as well as, him, as he's doing and improving as he has gives me the motivation and interest to stay alive. Because I believe that a person dies when they no longer wants to live. But I have a reason with, with Mike here. And he gives me the motivation. I will stay alive and I will watch him become a success because I will not leave until that happens. my life because he helped me to deal with people. I know how to deal with people now. Before, I just couldn't, I couldn't talk to people. I used to always want to be alone, I, and now I learned how to deal with anyone. I could talk to anyone, even about their problems. And it's like a father and son relationship. You know, even though he is my manager and trainer, sometimes I forget that because of the way we are. <laughs> 